Hey, y'all, it's Michael Kaya Morning Show. You better wake it up, shake it up, move that thing around a little. Ooh, watch it cool, watch it cool, cool, cool. You better get up this morning and move that thing around a little bit. <laughs> Lady, if you don't put that biscuit down, we gonna have trouble. Good morning, y'all. It's the Michael Kaya Morning Show, and I'm your boy, Michael Kaya, world-famous, world-renowned, often talked about, alleged comedian, and we're here five days a week just to get you generated, get you up, get you going, get you moving, get you motivated, baby. It's the Everything. Everything is about God and family. Once you get that down, everything else takes care of itself. Hey, we're going to pull these kind and great. So let's show our father. Hey, God is good. God is good. God is good. Hey, good morning, family. What can I say? I woke up on the beautiful day. Beautiful day. Come on, y'all. Let's do it. Sing along. It's the mic. Okay, I'm on this show. This way. Come on, keep on the flow. If you really want to get out of go, go, go. You come to the Michael Kaya show with cleaners and singers and comedians, too. We don't even know what we're going to do. We just having fun. Son of a gun. It's the Michael Kaya. Okay, that's enough. Cut that music off. Enough of that nonsense. Hey, I'm your boy, Michael Kaya. And uh, this is Wednesday, yo, Midwalk Hump Day. Uh, today is uh, March 9th, and this is episode 572. We are rushing to that 600. Boy, we're going to throw a celebration on that one. Let me get right to it because we have a special guest who's coming to us live from France. So we got to get to her shortly. But we never start without the comedian, and I never start without my co-host. The co-host with the most, get it, get it together, all the way from the south. He's so far south at the pump sunlight down there. Get your hands together for uh, Cletus Cassidy. Woo! He What's, going on? What's going on, Mike? How are you today, man? Man, I'm super califragilisticexpialidocious. How are you? Man, I can't complain in real life. Just Don't trying to make it out here in this thing, man. Look like you're making it to me, though. At least yeah, man. Eating well, that's well, well, I'm not eating well. That's the problem. That's, oh, but you're when you eating. eat well, you have your shape. When you eat unwell, that's when you end up being me. No, you but, heard this sentence wrong. I said you're eating well. Right, uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear the comma. I did not hear the comma. It was but a what's, comma. Go ahead. what's amazing, though, Michael, is big news mm -hmm. just got uh, cast in the new... Uh, Ghostbuster movie. I will be playing the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. It's just <laughs> one of those Black Lives Matter things. You know, we had white marshmallow men for so long. It was about time a black man was able to be the marshmallow man. Uh, yeah, and my, and on that, you know, I know Black History Month. We just uh, slid out of what white folks have given us as our Black History Month, but every day is Black History Day for me. So of course, every month is. So we're gonna also jump in a little bit and show y'all this um, a piece of tape. From the proud family, where they talk uh -huh. about reparations that they made the white folks all the racists that get mad. They fist and balled up so tight. They just, oh, you can just sound like a gunshot. Pow! Hear their butts just shutting. Oh, they mad about this. They mad. But yet it is so excellent. It is so correct. But we're gonna get into all that. We got a lot of show for you today, yo. We have a vocalist coming in. We have an artist coming from uh from France. We got two comedians. We got the gospel strippers have finally they're not. I think they got canceled. Okay, yeah. all right, they got canceled again. We will not have the gospel strippers, but right now, why don't we hit that button for the comedians? Because we're going to go and bring the comedy. We got always got to do comedy up front, because you got to be laughing and stuff, get your day started. So if you just hit that button, we just... That's right, folks, it's time for Michael Callier's Comedy Corner. Come on, somebody. Some of the funniest comedians on the planet has been on this show. Over 400 comics have done their dance right here at the Comedy Corner, but you better be funny. I tell you right now, if you ain't funny, woo, it's going to be a long walk back to your car we're gonna talk about you oh we're gonna say some terrible stuff you're gonna hate us so you better be good because it's the michael kaya comedy corner <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Oh, i'm sorry hey y'all all the way from st louis hollywood come on y'all hollywood's in the house Woo! good morning huh? bro 
I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, but it's cool though, you know. You are from Memphis, you have to take a left <laughs> to St. Louis. I'm sorry, all the way from Memphis, y'all. Hollywood, woo! Come on. How y'all doing? Great, great. Everybody's good, brother. Yeah, man. Um, well, really, um, I got uh, where well, this happened to me. It's a true story. Uh, so. I lived in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, it's right right outside of Nashville, and um, and this dude was cutting hair out of the house, and the police was watching and thought that they were selling weed out of the house, but really he was cutting hair, and I got my financial aid money and everything, and I was just like, you know, I got to get my hair cut because you know it wasn't no barbers, it was like a white college town, and. I'm in the chair or whatever, you know, it's dogs, weed, guns, it's all type of stuff, you know. And I, I hop in the chair, and, you know, I'm not knowing the police watching the, the uh, apartment. And he cut the chili bowl <laughs> around my head. <laughs> and um, and I know you hear, boom, 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 Murphy Bear police. The dog said, bark. And they were just running around going crazy. And, um... I'm worried about the wrong stuff. So I'm like, hey, you know, go on blend this before you open that door. He like, nah, get the door, get the door. And he ran in the room, locked the door. And I look at my periphery as I'm going to the door. They throwing the weed out the window. And the police was downstairs catching it. So I'm like, ain't no way. So the uh, the police come back upstairs. And they say, who? Who who's got the weed? And you know, everybody looking around, you know, acting crazy, acting like they don't know who it is. And, Nigga, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, uh Cletus. Uh huh. I'm sorry to wake you. Is this Negro been funny yet? So last time we had a meeting, you told me to make sure I make them feel like they funny, even if they not. Even if they not. Oh. So I was, and but then I didn't know whether he was just giving a testimony. Or what? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if I'm his barber, I know who's gonna snitch. It is clearly gonna be him. <laughs> he has told everything. He came in, so, so it was weed, oh. guns, and dogs. And I don't even think the dogs were registered. And see, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part has been when he said the dog said bark. I was like, that well, that's that's what dogs that was say. Pretty good, sir. I just want to say it was very good for you to stop by. Uh, this we just gonna call a visit because this was not a comedy spot. But I appreciate you. We're not gonna beat you up as bad as we usually beat up people when they come in here and they ain't funny. Uh, but I can't wait to get off the phone and give you my commentary. But anyway, we're gonna finish this show without you. Tell people how to find you in case they want to. Okay, my Instagram is Hollywood Three Wise um and Seven Ds. Wow. Yeah, okay. so let's just talk that about marketing. Let's just talk about marketing. You can't make people stutter to find your name. So <laughs> you may have to come up with something different. If I feel <laughs> like I'm stuck on the Y's, you can't be like, it's Hollywood with four Y's, seven D's, eight O's, and a partridge in a pear tree. Like, that's a lot for me to have to type. So let's just go with, like, H. Wood or get this wood. That could be, you know, I like that, actually. <laughs> get this wood. That'd in be other nice. words, we're here to help. I like you. it. I like we're it. We're here to help you, sir. But the therapy part is over. We'll get back to the show. Uh, leave. Oh, you just just drop. No, he don't get the woo. He don't get the woo woo. Let's say bye or not, man. No, he he the woo. Hit us with a woo woo woo, man. You are, you are all right. Give me a uh, give me a W and the woo woo woo. That's a V, nigga. That's just an L. That's just an L. Uh, That's a crooked L. Okay, woo woo. Get out of here. Okay, we yeah. gotta keep we gotta keep moving. That's Hollywood. Uh I did meet him in Memphis. I have to say I didn't see him do comedy. I took a chance. That's what we call a shot in the dark. Well, that shot missed. Oh, look out. So anyway, uh Hollywood, I'll talk to you later, man. We're gonna bring him back though. He's gonna come back and actually be funny. I guarantee you. Or we're just gonna choke him. All right, now look, we have a special guest today. Um, who's who's here from France right now. She's coming in from France, so we want to get her on the top of the show and we don't want to rush her, but this is very important. Um we want her to be French, not Russian. That's right. Uh, but she'd have to be a black Russian, which ain't bad. It's actually kind of tasty. It's if a you have it with a beverage, another beverage like a side of water. Okay, anyway, so 
all the way from France by way of Hollywood. Get your hands together for Angela Robinson. Woo! Are you hyphenated? Yes, Angela hyphenated Robinson Witherspoon. Witherspoon, Witherspoon. We got to put that in there. Yeah, so when the picture Hi, Michael. Small, bonjour, Michael. Comment ça bonjour, va? Bonjour, bonjour. So listen, let me, let me, uh, let me holler at you. Wait a minute. I see him trying to jump in. Take it easy. You coming back in a minute. Bonjour. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, Michael, and thank you for inviting me on. It's so sweet thank, of you. Thank you for saying yes. You know, of course, I, I love your husband. I loved your husband. He was out there. We was out there in this game together for Oof. all the years. Uh, I I think the man is so great, and we miss him. Bang bang bang! You know all all these things that that <laughs> makes us think about the great John Witherspoon. And actually, we probably should have tried to slide him in here on Black History Month. That because it's definitely <laughs> Black History. And you want to talk he, about history? Look at this picture of him. How old is he there? I think he's just coming out of high school there. Oh, okay. Lean a little bit to your left, that I can see that, you while we see the picture. Lean to your left a little. Oh no, you can't go. Turn your camera away. I see your whole face. Come over. Oh no, no <laughs> I'll take your partial. Let me that down. You think he was in high school? Huh? You think he was in high school in this picture? Now you see the street. There we go. Okay. I, all think, right. I don't know. That was before me. Oh, before you. So that's uh -huh. what he called a comparison of the young him. And oh the yeah. Young. Okay. Oh yeah. And where is he here on this photo now? That's recent. That's uh, might be the year before he died because we were looking at an old uh, portfolio of photos of him. He's showing them to our kids. But that that picture of him looks like AJ Johnson. Oh no, that's him. No. That's him back in the day. You know, he used to say he no. didn't work when he was younger because he was too pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And this yeah. last was iconic. This 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 is the picture that. We see everywhere because it's just an iconic picture of him. And I want well, to present. He used that for promotion because he was still working 32 weeks a year. Well, I'm going to start talking to you in one second, but I want to present this to you first. Uh, a young white uh, uh, painter out of uh, upstate New York. In fact, this is the artist. Uh, uh -huh. His name is John Paul Wanters. And okay. he actually painted this version for you. Well, wow. He gave it to me, but I want you to have that. So I will get that to you as soon as you come back. You're in France. That is beautiful. Back. I thank you so much. And you have to put me in touch with him so I can thank him and you oh, know, give, would, him his, give him his give him his props. That. He would love that. Okay. We can Where does he uh, live? Where does he live? In, um in uh, 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 upstate New York in Rot I think Rochester. Is someone upstate okay, well, I want to meet him. I want to meet him, and I, I want to thank him. I would definitely let you know. Wait a minute. I would definitely let you know uh, the exact city. I'll hook you up since you want to meet him. He would love that. Uh, Waters. Yeah. That His name is John Claude Waters, and he's in Buffalo, New York. Okay, I'm going to wait till the summertime to go up there. You know it's cold <laughs> up there, girl. First, you have such a light about you. There's oh, so thank much you. light and joy. And it's just coming out of you. It's so wonderful. Good morning. Good, is it morning? Good morning. Yet? Good morning. Good morning. What time is, is it, it in France? Uh, it's 4.14. I've just had a wonderful lunch. And I'm at a photo lab with a friend of mine, uh, Robert Hale, because he's printing up some stuff. You know Robert. I, I think I know him. I'm not certain, but I think so. Yeah. Well, but you I, know everybody, Michael, or everybody knows you. And you have so much stuff you're doing. You're an author. You're a producer. You're a writer. And you I'm now an have actress. a movie. I'm an actress. And that was me actress. and Soul Plane sitting next to John. Oh, you were sitting with your husband on Soul Plane. Yeah, that was oh. my potato. That was my potato. <laughs> that was your first time? No, no. That was my potato he stuck What's his that? finger in. Oh, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. You never saw Soul Plane, I, I Michael? I didn't see Soul Plane. You never right? saw Soul Plane. That's I your feel homework. bad about it. I missed you gotta that. Go do your homework. homework. I got to see it because there's so many of the, ha the hot comics is on now that Everybody's were on in that. that movie. Kevin Hart. Uh, but Michael uh, Cowley. Snoop Doggy Everybody. Dog, Monique. Um, uh, 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 the pretty the pretty girl, the real pretty Cletus, girl. Cletus. Cletus. Yeah. I mean, everybody's in there. Some movie. more. Some more. Some more. And she was everybody's in, in that movie. So, okay, so that was your, your debut movie. Was that not your debut? You've been no, acting No, the while. first movie I ever did was 48 Hours. 
What did you do in 40, what did you do in 48 hours? I'm at the bar. He walks up to me and I go, I'm with somebody for $1,500, 1982. You before you were born. $1,500. And you had one line. $1,500. 500, 500 for each word. I <laughs> love it. I, you know, my first movie was uh, Hollywood Shuffle with Robert Townsend. And I only had, I think, three words. A uh, four word. No, no. Oh, five word. No, no. It's a muffler. That's what I call it. Oh, <laughs> See, there you I am. That's you. In the blue suit. That's me. Oh my God! How beautiful! I, I wore a little wig because I didn't know if that movie was going to be any good. <laughs> wow! Wow! Thank you, Cleve, for throwing that up. That was amazing. Good okay, job. Listen, well, here's your new thing. You have a new movie, right? Yeah, but that ain't it. That's not you. No, I hit no. the wrong one. Let me find. Oh, I hit one button. Too, one button too That's soon. That's my That's film. It. That's my documentary about Betty Saw. And Betty was Sarr was part of the civil rights movement, and she lives in Laurel Canyon right now. She's 96 years old. Wow. So in 1970, she did a piece called The Liberation of Aunt Jemima, where she put a gun in Aunt Jemima's right hand and a grenade in the other. Said, get me, <laughs> off, get me off of this box. I'm ready to be a warrior. So and I worked on that for eight years and starting to come out. The mayor just showed it for Black History Month. Wow. A couple of weeks ago. And then we're in the Beverly Hills Film Festival in April. Mm. We were in the Pan-African Film Festival in... Uh, like two weeks in, ago. Yeah. Were, weren't you over there? I was there, absolutely. I saw you over there. And yeah. then we're um, we're going to do something for the Lakers. We're going to show it to the Lakers uh, for their In the Paint series. So what did you do with this? Did you produce I'm it? the director and the executive producer. Oh, nice. Where will I we put up the money. I put up the money. <laughs> but where would we be able to see it? Is it a documentary? It's a documentary. It's an hour and 15 minutes. We're looking for distribution. We're hoping to get HBO or Netflix or BET or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, can give me some of my money back. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I love you, that. You know, I love a check. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you. I, I appreciate you. Tell people what you want people to know about you before we get out of here. What what one what's one thing you want people to know about either what you're doing? I want people to know that I was married to John for 32 years. Whoa. And that I, I laughed every single day and that he did not find me by the side of the road. I was already, <laughs> I was already working. I had five national commercials running. He said, You got another two thousand dollar check. He said, I put your two thousand with my we gonna have four thousand. Mm, so why so we got together in 1986, 87, and we stayed married for 32 years. Two beautiful kids, wow. JD Witherspoon, who's doing comedy. Yes. Have you met him? I met him several times. I called him as soon as I got this painting because I was trying to get it to y'all. Yeah, yeah, JD is working, and then my other, my younger son is goes by Trace Nova. Trace Wait, Nova is he the first son? JD is he any good? JD's the first Maybe. son. Yeah, but is he's, he any good as a comedian? He's Ugh. very funny, but, you know, he went to private school. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, all right. And you have another kid. Let me let me get him on in on some of this. Come on in here, Clee. I know you've got to have a John Witherspoon something you want to add. So I don't. John Witherspoon, I never got to actually work with John Witherspoon. It's kind of one of the, you know, regrets of life. I love him. Did you um, meet him? Yeah, I've met him, but I never got to work with him. So he was amazing. I'm, um, I, I was trying to make mushroom belts my whole life, you know, just to try to be a little <laughs> bit more like John Witherspoon. But I did work with Don D.C. Curry. Mm. Uh, so my favorite, one of That's my favorite That's almost the is, same thing. Almost. Correct. So I worked with Don D.C. Curry. <laughs> I've opened for him a few times. And he always talked so glowingly and lovingly about uh, John yeah. Witherspoon. And yeah. the fact that he's now the oldest living member from the Friday cast. DC Curry wow. at the John. Well, he better home. watch his back, huh? Yeah, he gotta watch his, <laughs> gotta watch his front too. <laughs> the front is what'll get you. Woo! And uh, so he, are he dropping like flies. Yeah, mm. you know, people are dying that have never died before. So we gotta really it's be cognizant. You can't get out of this life alive. You can't. They, they won't it. let you. They won't <laughs> let you. And, you. and you still gotta pay your bills. So it's amazing. I'm just honored to hear um, that you were there, and I think that it's really a testament to you when they talk about people who are all time great, um, about how the wife is always a, such a great, great support of them. And 32 yeah, John, years of John marriage John bought with them. old cars. I bought real estate and art. 
And that's what uh, that's what DC Curry said. That, that that was the two things they did. They would go buy a car. He said every time you see a car, John will buy him. Be like, hey, man, I got this car. You got to get in. So it's great, man, just to hear about you all. And it's yeah. amazing. And, and like John, um, like Michael said, I think just the light and the energy that you already bring. I've never met you before, but I feel like I've known you at least an hour. And um, well, it's, so it's great. You can meet me, honey. Energy. You can meet me. I don't there have no bodyguard. Go. I ain't got no I'm bodyguard. I'm going to meet Mrs. Witherspoon. <laughs> and that's what I'm finna do. <laughs> I love it. Well, I love you, and I thank you for being here. Tell people how to find you so they can get more information. Uh, my Instagram is a Robinson Witherspoon. A for Angela Robinson Witherspoon. Um, and I only have a few followers, but I appreciate every single one of them. Well, you can get a lot more because these people follow folks on this show. So all right, and Michael, you. I just want to say thank you and congratulations on all your success. I remember seeing you at Venice Beach. And John was saying, this nigga's funny. This nigga's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that means a lot to hear he said that. Yeah. He said it. He, he was said the he best said, of the best when he was here. We loved Let's him. Let's check him out. Let's check him out. He's funny. God bless you. Thank you. All right. And leave us with a woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. Yes, y'all. Angela Robinson with us, boom, right here on the Mike Sky Morning Show. She got this movie coming, y'all. It's a documentary, and y'all need to check it out. Let me throw the picture. Should have got her to say "woo woo" in French. I think "woo oh, woo" in French. You know, you know, it's actually hey, "woo woo woo." Do you have a French word for "woo woo woo"? Yes. Ooh woo woo. Ooh woo ooh, woo. Ooh, <laughs> ooh woo woo, baby. Ooh well, woo ooh, woo. Ooh, woo. Thank you. You're fantastic. <laughs> we love you. Thank you, Angela. That was fantastic. French is just the best. It's the best uh, language ever. French? French is just the best language ever. Yeah. I you can't go that. wrong. French, if you can speak French, Michael, you're guaranteed to get the draws. Well, anybody can speak French. Wee oui, wee. Oui. You get it? Wee oui, wee. Oui. No. Not if you have one of those, though. No, if you had a wee oui, wee, oui, you shouldn't talk, talk. Now, look, we got to get right to the next comedian because she, she was supposed to go on top of the show and she stuck around. In fact, actually, this will be the first comedian because we, really, uh, we can't really count this fella. Okay, so um <laughs> she's amazing, man. She's a huge Alabama fan. That's why we're so tight. She's a huge Alabama oh, yeah, Crimson Tide fan. Great artist who's coming on right now. Yeah. And I showed I was trying to show our picture yesterday because we went on air to talk about uh the, the Will Smith and the Chris Rock thing. They called NBC called one somebody to come on and talk about it. She got us on. I put the picture up yesterday and today. And it still has not come up. Doggone it. And hecky shoot. Oh, here's a thought, though. Call me crazy, but I love to see people happy and succeed. Life is a journey, not a competition. Just want to throw that in. And one more quick thing before I bring you on, Angela. We have a great guy who's on our show almost every morning. I don't see him today. He's a vocalist. He, and you can't get in this uh, too fat, Shakua. Somebody out there tell me. Who he is, what's his name, and what's the group? Oh, uh, first one up. Let me see who's the first one up. First one up. They don't have it. Who's gonna say it? Who who got it? Who's got? Can I give it? a hint. No, no, no. It shouldn't be no hint. It's all right there. We should see it. Okay, all right. By now, it's Walter should be. Miller got us. All right, wait, wait, wait. Walter Miller said, "John, John, you got it. That's John, John, upper right corner." And of course, what is the group? And there you go. Five of kind, a story of truth, y'all. I saw this picture the other day. I was like, I never seen John John that young. I don't know where he is this morning. I hope he's somewhere around. Let's get right on to to uh our comedian. Then we're going to Dr. Lakeisha Legree, y'all. We have uh Wellness Wednesday. We oh we got so much. We have a great vocalist coming in. I'm excited. I'm excited. So <laughs> let's get to the next comedian. Remember, you got to give her. Now, we got to bring her on by saying Roll Tide, Michael, because that's what she really likes. Roll She's a huge Alabama Tide. Fan. Oh, you had to tell me what that is. Okay. Hey, here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Angela Gaines. <laughs> Good <laughs> angel. Comedian. <laughs> wonderful lady. Hi. Hey, everybody. Michael, don't follow up Cletus because you're going to get cut. I am a University of Georgia national, two times national champion. We beat Alabama's butt. Cletus over money. <laughs> and that's how that go. So don't Ooh, worry about we. it. <laughs> He tried to throw up a blockade before you came in. Exactly. Just hating, yo. But listen, I'm so excited to be here with you. You just don't understand. This is amazing. 
But I got to I got to tell you, Michael, it is parent teacher conference week all what? over the world. And I just want to get on here to just remind parents and let everybody know some do's and don'ts this week that teachers will be grateful for. First <laughs> of all, get to your conference on time. We already know the little boy bad. Um, because <laughs> it is March and you've already known this and we knew first day of school when you dropped them off because any parent that don't come to a complete stop <laughs> you know you're bad, okay and ma'am please it's March get some reasonable punishments okay you cannot take away baths and breakfast all right <laughs> The kid is getting bullied because of no reasons. Um, also, ma'am, your kid's reading skills are not based on whether or not he's a Gemini. Okay, stop asking me about that. They'd be like, "Oh, is he spelling like that? Because he an Aries? That's just his personality." No, ma'am, you don't read with him, ma'am. Okay, let's let's start that. And listen, parents, I am not snitching. Stop asking me about the daddy's new girlfriend. Yes, she picked him up last Thursday. Yes, she's smaller than you. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's all I got. Now, listen, before I go, listen, let me tell you something. Latino parent conferences are my favorite. Yes, I am biased. Okay. Mm. Latinos love teachers. They call us maestra. And that makes me feel so good. And let me tell you something. Number one reason uh, they're my favorite. And Latinos, y'all can chill out on how many people y'all bring to the conference. Okay. <laughs> This is not a community gathering, okay? This is not communion, all right? You don't need 176 people. One of y'all can go to work. Go clock in, okay? Stop coming. <laughs> hey, the next thing, stop trying to bribe me with tequila. Yes, it worked in the past, but that's not your business, okay? I'm trying to be better with my eating habits. Another thing, they do pay me extra when I speak Spanish. So I got to tell y'all, I'm really proud about that. And my, my conference sounded a little bit like this. To Sano Norito. Okay? <laughs> to Sano Nomato. Okay? To Sano Repite Third Grado. Again, again. Pero, pero, un momento, un momento. Es posible. Es posible. To buy me Gucci bag. <laughs> That's my time on the Michael Call Your Morning Show. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's what I'm talking about. Come on with me. Man, you should have been staring at every word she said. You shouldn't have left the screen for a moment. I saw you looking all over the place like this. Hollywood, you should have been staring like this. The whole time. That was a course in comedy right there. That was a class. Boy, you put that down. Let me quit fooling with you, Hollywood. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, so that was a wonderful set. That's what I'm talking Thank about. You. And that's what we need more of the comics to do who come on. Most of them do it. But sometimes they come and they be stuck. Some of them they come just to talk. But to come in and just say hello, y'all. Just come in and say hi. What's going on? Hit your set. Get out. Woo! That's something. We, that's bankable right there. You can go okay. check it and mm -hmm. even the fact that I got set up by, you know, Tupac Shakira's um, <laughs> version, version of cool. wellness. Um, yeah, talking about I'm a roll tire. Yeah, uh -huh. roll you. <laughs> How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, Michael, remember I started when we did the Essence? You were my judge at the Essence Clean Comedy Competition in 2002. And, and I was won, and you were my judge. And yeah. you won. Will, will, yes. will, you know the fix was in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Oh, my God. So that makes this 20 years, 21 yes. years. Yes. I yes. Love, how long you been doing? How long you been teaching? Teaching longer, uh, about 25. Yeah, a little longer than that. I'm so proud that. of you. I yeah. love you. We got to get you out of there, man. You know, you no, only get 20, but, but, 20 out. years for murder. Time out. Time <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a full-time teacher anymore. I do consultation now. So, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, because of comedy and sticking with it. And also, Michael is such a mentor to me. He's always encouraged me, told me I was funny. Michael, a long time ago, you said you and I are going to get a sitcom together where you play the principal and I play the teacher. And I see that. Oh, I can still see that. And I can still I see have that. It. 
you see them outliving everybody else. Oh, they dropping yeah. like flies, and I'm still here. They're feeling Listen, younger than ever. You can't know? be the inspirational Michael Collier that y'all talking about. You and Miss Witherspoon talking. About, oh, everybody dying. I was like, let me get off this. I got oh my late. god, it was that was that was sweet to have her come on. She that, was. Oh my God, I met her once. She's an amazing light always. And I love that she's such an advocate for stand up. And and her son is funny. I saw him at um the and belly he's room. Funny? Yeah, he's funny. I saw him at he don't, he's not, he's not like his dad, which I love. He's mm -hmm. carved his own way. Right. And um, yeah, he's funny. You should have him on for sure. I would have yeah. him on. You'd like to ever get him to return the call. I'd have yeah. him. Yeah, and you know, in Hollywood, you know, if you ever want to, Michael, I'll give him a free comedy session. You know, I teach stand up. I've been teaching stand up at Flappers independently Wait a for minute. years. Yeah. Are you yeah. open to that, Mr. Hollywood? For any opportunity. Any <laughs> opportunity. Open for any opportunity. So yeah. when you get off the day, Hollywood, call me. I'm gonna send her number to you, or I'll send his yeah. number to you. And that see, that's yeah, that's why I love this. Because show. I this know what it's like, Michael. I know what it's like. See, what he's doing is he's doing what he thinks comedy's supposed to look like. You know what I mean? Mm. He's, he's Mimicking, he's mimicking our end product, but mm. it's so much work and so many nuances that needs to go into it that he just doesn't know. And so when I was watching him, I'm glad he had this opportunity and mm. he's very fortunate that someone like you saw him early and was mm. honest with him because out here in the real Hollywood, they will lie. And they would say, oh, 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 my God, that was Nailed wonderful. It. You will They'll never tell you you're fine and send you right on up on stage thinking it's that that, that, yeah. that, that so is you good. got a bomb. And, so and they'll be in the back to watch Yeah. It. Watch so this is the key. Bomb quickly. Bomb quickly. Bomb quickly. The more you bomb, the quicker you'll get to getting your voice and your pace. And bombing is the best lesson in the world. When you fail, you don't want that to happen no more. That'll mm -hmm. make you go back and regroup. What you trying to get in there, Cleet? I feel... I'm trying to keep the emotions in, oh, Michael, shit. because I'm learning things now. I mean, not just for Hollywood's bad set, but <laughs> when I met Angel, I met her in Los Angeles, right? And she was so kind, and she had so <laughs> many great words. And now to find out that people in Los Angeles actually lied to you about how well you did. I don't know <laughs> if I can trust Angel at this point. Like... I got off stage and she was so kind and she was really, really mm -hmm. angel. She mm -hmm. talks about other people's light, but she was one of the people that I met. We all filmed um, Keep Your Distance Keep together. Keep Your Distance, yeah, um, on stage. In, in mm -hmm. LA, yep. And she met, and I had never met her before, mm -hmm. but she treated me like we weren't strangers at all. Like she had mm -hmm. known me forever and we mm -hmm. talked and it was just a great experience meeting her. So she was so great. And so nice, but now I realize it was all a ruse. <laughs> <laughs> she has been putting it on the whole time. Well, we love you. You know we got to keep going. And your set was fantastic. Your thank whole you. interview and everything was great. And thank you for offering to work with Hollywood. You know, I usually teach the classes too, but I've been too busy to go I back. I know. You, know, so you got a lot three. going on. Oh, uh, but I want to do. I want to teach a class again. Teaching classes, the, it's so much fun. It's so much fun yeah. to do that. And Josiah has become one of my best friends, and he did the second class. It was the best in yeah. the class. You yeah. know, you just got here to fight check <laughs> off. How you expect to go to the head of the class and you've been here seventeen minutes? Okay. I'm not even about being in the class. Is now every now I'm finding out that I'm not even one of your best friends. You don't put Josiah in front of me. <laughs> hey. But where was Josiah at at your birthday party? That's Not there. How about that? That's what I'm saying. I I say he's the best friend, but who ended up at the party? You hey. at the party? Oh, what? What? No. Where was the, do you see Josiah in there? Is he peeking? Is he hiding behind me? No. Well, there is, there is some light coming off the bottom, and he is kind of light skinned. <laughs> so I don't know. It might have been his essence, his aura. Cletus, you was looking real handsome in that picture. You made me look. He was. Right he in. cleans up really well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I showered for that. You know, I so that was. He was. I had no idea who he was. I thought it was a mortician or something when I got there. And then I, I looked closer. I was surprised it was Cletus in a suit. Okay, we got to keep moving. We got more show. I love you, and, and uh, Angela. Angel, thank you. Angel. Angel Gaines, Angel thank you, thank you, thank you're you. I welcome. love you. We go way back. We got Alex Haley. We got Roots, and you're still excellent every time. God bless thank you. Thank you. Have a great hey, morning, guys. Thanks for taking me to NBC with you yesterday, too. We, we, we didn't get where we can find her, Mike. Huh? We didn't get where we can find her. Oh, give us some information. 
I, I put it right there on the screen. They can find me at angelgains.com or go right to Instagram at the Angel Gains. Yeah. You make it easy. Hit me with the woo woo woo. Well, woo, 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 woo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. God bless you. Give it up, yo. Angel Gains right here on the Mike Kaya Morning Show, which is just getting better and better. Hold on. Let me look. Hold up. Wait a minute. Okay. This will take two minutes, guys. I got to jump in and do prayer before we bring the next person. We're bringing Dr. Lakeisha up next. Uh, hey, y'all, you know we don't do this without prayer. This is For me, my life is all about G-O-D. It's good old guy. Oh, I be cussing and stuff. But I don't mean nobody no harm. At the end of the day, it's about the head kookamook and the bottle wash of my life, the king of my universe and the rule of my soul. That's good old God. So let's start with a holy breath. Hold that breath and think one positive thought, one positive thing you want to happen today. Now exhale slowly from your mouth, and that centers you. Father God, Mother God, as we open our hearts, our souls, our minds, our spirits, we invite you to come on in and fill us with your love, your peace, your passion, your joy, your wisdom, your sense of kindness, your generosity, your sense of forgiveness. Oh, Father God, if we just learn to forgive everybody for everything they've ever done to, to us, and most importantly, if we can forgive ourselves for everything we think we've done. That will heal us in a way that we would never even be able to comprehend. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We, we pray that you bless us today and bless us indeed. We pray that you enlarge our territory greatly. We pray that your hand will be with us and guide us past evil and we will cause no pain. In fact, we, we pray that you take that hand and guide us towards more love, more peace, more power, greater abundance, greater understanding, not just of the world, but greater understanding of ourselves. We feel cool, God. We are right, God, because we know we got you. It's all good because it's all God. So, Father God, let this day be super califragilisticexpialidocious. Then put some stink on it. I'm talking about continue to be the wind beneath our wings as we soar and fly and navigate this thing called life. We love you, God. We trust you. And we walk today with attitude and gratitude because we know you all that in a bag of chips. It's all good because it's all God. And we love you, love you, love you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my Sonia, my sweet Sweet, sweet, sweetheart, Sonia, who's changed everything in my entire life. Her mere touch changes me. I adore you, baby. Thank you, God, for giving me that blessing for the home, for our family, for our friends, for the show, for the Kaya clan. Boy, y'all stand tall. Y'all show up every day. I got to stand up for y'all. I give y'all a salute. The Kaya clan every morning, you're right here. All y'all from Deanna to Bonnie to, to, to uh, it's a million of y'all. Y'all show up every morning. God bless y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, we say to Father God, thank you for all of it. Because all good things come from you, Father God. And so we say, in Jesus' name, let this day be outstanding and wonderful and blessed. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I mean, I say, boom, shakalaka. And the famous word of those of us who call ourselves the Kalia clan. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, good prayer. I know you heard me call them loud. There you go. Hey, without further ado, let's get to Dr. Lucretia. And let me say to Melanie, Melanie, thank you, baby. You are the most patient person. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Melanie's gonna come up in here and sing her face off, y'all. That's that's when we'll get to that in a minute. But Dr. Lakeisha Legree had a segment that she would come every Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday from her offices and, and tell us something about health and hook us up. She's back, she's black, she's gorgeous, she's awesome. Please get your hands together for Dr. Lakeisha Legree. Oh boy, right here on the <laughs> Back. Missed you. I missed you guys yeah. too. It's so good to be back. Thanks for that welcome uh, greeting. That was fantastic. I'm, I'm just surprised you're not in your office with that, what's the name, with that waterfall. You know, she got a little waterfall in her office that comes down the wall, the whole thing. You know I mean, what, Michael, I'm going to be honest with you. You caught me off guard yesterday when we decided to uh, bring the segment back. So, you know, I had to make it do what it do. I'm actually in the hair salon about oh, to get my hair done. But, you know, okay. I improvise. You know how black women do. We, we get it together. So I got this nice little cap on, threw mm -hmm. some lip gloss on, and I'm here for the people. See, and black people can do that. They can be minute me, and they can be ready right now if they have to. And even the, the little, uh, what do you call thing on your head? Is it a scarf? 
it's one of these um satin line um, the satin that you pull it yeah yeah uh -huh. you can look good now my woman like that she could look good at anything she Thank be talking you. about her hair but she just throw anything on her head she just look fabulous you know you got it down you got to meet her one day she's gonna love you i look forward down. to it i hear she's in north kakalaki where i am so i look forward to it yes so what part of north carolina are you charlotte how far is that from Winston Salem. Oh, about maybe a couple of hours. Actually, oh, my, of my hours. best girlfriend lives in Winston Salem. She's at Wake Forest University. She's a physician. So why don't you make it a road trip? You know, next week I do a uh, rally. North Carolina, and I know at least one of those days I'm gonna come back down to Winston Salem because you know my wife she's gonna come to me and see me you know doing a weekend, but I will come down and see her one day. I'll come down to our home there. You have to cap, you know, let's try to set it up where you okay. and your best girlfriend can meet us. Okay, you love that. that. Would be so good. Hey, yeah. what do you have for us in the medical field today? What's going on? Yes. So since today was a little short lived, I have two things. One, well, actually three things. One, since we're coming off like History Month, and today is actually International Women's Day. Did you know that, Michael? I do know that. I, I wanted that. to shout out the first Black female physician. Her name was Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Ooh. She lived 1830 to 1895. Rebecca Lee Crumpler. She was a bad girl. She was a nurse first, uh -huh. and she went on to be a doctor, uh -huh. and then she wrote books, and her, her niche in terms of patients were women and children who were um, impoverished and who have been denied medical care by white men. And she was the first? The first black doctor in these United States, Rebecca Lee Crumpler. See, and we should know that, y'all. That's part of black history. We really need to know. I didn't know that. Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Rebecca mm -hmm. Lee Crumpler, first yep. black doctor. Mm -hmm. Male and or female or just fee first black female doctor? First black female. Not okay. first black doctor. The first black doctor was a male. She's the first black female physician. Okay, I'll come on with your bad self. Woo woo. Okay, what's the next thing? What and then else? the second thing I want to remind people of is to please be an advocate for your own health care. You know, in your previous segment with John Witherspoon's wife, we were talking about how people are passing away early. Um, mm -hmm. I have a really, really um, a dear, dear uh, friend of mine who lost someone close to him and it was to colon cancer at a very, very young age. And so I encourage all of your listeners to be on top of your health, get all of your screening exams, specifically a colonoscopy for black men and black women. You should be getting that by age 50. If you have a family history, you should start that at age 45. This year, I'll be turning 45. So you know what? I'll be Oof. getting my first colonoscopy. So we can journey that together. Oh, wow. And then in terms of women, you want to make sure you're doing your self-breast exams in the shower, that you're getting your mammograms when you're supposed to, that you're getting your pap smears when you're supposed to. Because if you do something simple as a screening exam and worst case scenario, something is found, early detection is, is always everything. Early detection, nine times out of 10 can be curable as opposed to finding things late in the game, you know? Well, so what's wrong with black men? How come we won't go to the doctor <laughs> until a limb is falling off? What is that even about? You know, I think it's historical with respect to lack of trust. You know, if you look back in our history, when we talk about black men, we're looking at the Tuskegee experiment with mm -hmm. syphilis and with lack of vaccination during that time and intentionally infecting our black men with syphilis. So I think generationally, it's been a lack of trust that's been passed down through mm -hmm. generations. Um, that and also a lack of physicians of color, particularly men who um, advocate for black men's health care, you know, and I think the third or the tertiary thing, too, is perhaps I'm just I'm just guessing here. So these are not facts, people. But my guess mm -hmm. is um, the lack of relationships, solid relationships. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm just talking about relationships between um, a black man and not necessarily a black woman, but a strong, solid woman who advocates for her man and says, you know, babe. Uh, let's make sure we get this done. I'm worried about you. I just want you to be around for a very long time to do yeah. life with me. So let's make sure we do these screenings. Yes. Tests. 
That makes a difference. You know, mm-hmm. A man got a good woman, she's going to be like, okay, we're going to look anyway. We're going to go check this out. You'll be like, no, baby, I'm all right. I feel good. Get your butt in the car. We're going. Then be like, oh, yeah. Man. And it's yeah. just because we, we love you. You know, we're in love yeah. with our men. And we, we just want y'all to be around to kick it with us for life. Okay, one last, one last question. Is, so is COVID gone? Is it back? Where is it? What's going okay, on? I'm glad you asked. So COVID-19, as we originally knew it, is still around, but in the, if I can use an analogy, its cousins are, are very much present. So oh, you okay. have what's called variants of it. So um, offsprings of it. So for example, mm-hmm. Omicron is a variant of COVID-19. And what it does is it can present differently. So for example, it can look like a common cold. So runny nose, cough, sore throat. Uh, It can look like the flu. You'll have myalgias, which is muscle pain. You can have Mm. chills with shaking. Um, You still have the loss of taste or smell. So it's still there. However, the numbers have decreased. And the reason the numbers have decreased is because there's been immunity that's been because of infections. A lot of people have already had COVID or because of vaccinations. A lot of people have been vaccinated or because of all of the above. So, you know, it's still there. It's just um, not as rampant as it used to be because everybody and their mama has had it or has been vaccinated, but it's not gone. So um, there's no, I don't want to give like a false sense of hope here. It's still very much present. It's just in a different format. Let's go fast. Uh, no, men are just chicken. We ain't going to no doctors. <laughs> Who That's said that? that? Mr. Mr. Thomas, Thomas said that. No, men are just chicken. I am. I'm like that. I'm well, scared. you know what? Here's what I'll say to that. Um, uh, you know, women can only love you as much as you love yourself. So if you're not in love with yourself enough to take care of yourself, and I'm not talking about just going to the doctor. I'm talking about being cognizant of what you put in your body in terms of what you eat, um, being cognizant of working your body out in terms of physical exercise, um, being cognizant of what you read in terms of stimulating your mind. You only got one body, you only got one life. Too much now. You (laughs) want You want to eat right, to live right, and the rest? This is too much. (laughs) Okay, but if we can do those things, those basic, like, let me tell you something I did last night that I haven't done in years. What's that? I slept slept for eight hours. Yeah. I I don't even, I don't remember what that feels like. I don't never sleep more than three, four hours a day. But I know that that's starting to take a toll on you because you need your rest and you need your water. And yes. anybody out there can deny that all you want, but you need your rest and you need your water. Definitely. And if you don't get them, you're going to see the effects on it. And I can feel my energy even becoming more sluggish over the weeks yes. because I'm doing these three hour sleeps and four hour sleeps. Last night, I was in bed about nine o'clock in the evening. I ain't never done that before. I didn't even understand when I woke up at 12 30 this morning. That and actually went, happened to me already. too. That but happened to me felt, too. So good. I, I fell was, asleep in my daughter's room at nine thirty, and that never happens. But rest is really important. When you I mean, don't get enough rest, rest, now, the when, rest, when you don't get at least, I'm gonna say, at the minimum six hours. The mm. goal is eight. The minimum is six. Mm. Then you're increasing your your risk of of getting some sort of infection. So basically, you decrease your immunity when you don't get enough sleep. And when Mm. you don't get enough sleep, your body also undergoes something called inflammation internally, which is another risk for getting sick. So rest, like you said, and water. Please don't you have. (laughs) Don't you have internal inflammation? I'm called, that sounds like- I'm called uh, what I have is called obesity. That's completely oh, different. okay. <laughs> the same thing. I thought that was okay. That could be changed, Cletus. That could be changed. That could be changed. But he working listen, on it too. Girl. Listen, Doctor Legree, and I and and I say this with all due respect. I know Uh-oh. that you're a doctor, Uh-oh. but me and my fat have been through thick and <laughs> thick together. So. I'm really not trying to break up with it. It's, it's been with me, you know? So. Yeah, I'm really not trying to break up with it. 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you have that. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so, here for you though. I'm here for you. Easy, I'm gonna let you have that. You. All right, we gotta go, Doctor. So can you start coming back on Wednesdays or is Wednesday not good or do you know no, yet? No, no, we can definitely do it. So we'll bring back the win welcome. I can't even say it. Well, so wellness me. Wednesdays. Coming segment. back to Wellness Every Wednesday. Wednesday. But you know what? I want I want to cater to the people. So if they can contact you somehow and How? let you know what I don't know if they are contact me or you just well, I just want to know you? what people want to learn about. How do they reach you though? Um, they can reach me through uh, all of the platforms or on my website. I have to be honest. I've taken like a social media break for over a year. So don't start talking trash when my junk is outdated. Uh, when you go there, but it's it's www. Oh, <laughs> anyway, um, it's www. <laughs> there, and then on all platforms is at Dr. Legree. At all platforms, Dr. Legree, I love you. You're awesome. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for saying yes and coming on this morning. And of folks, y'all should reach out to it. You like like if somebody had a particular ailment or something, mm -hmm. and they just want to ask a question, would you be mm -hmm. open to that? Yeah, consider this free medical advice. Obviously, free you're medical, but you get free up. medical advice. Yeah, but, else? Yeah. No, just right here. Look, my puppy then came in. She's so excited. My puppy <laughs> coming. What y'all talking about? Okay, mama, mama, come. Can you see the sweet? Well, that's a grown right dog. Here. That ain't a puppy. She, she trying not to be in the picture now. Mama, where you at? Mama. Look. Anyway, now she want to act shy. I didn't even call her over here. She came over here to be in our beers, and now she's going to act like when the camera on her. So anyway, uh, <laughs> we love you. Uh, leave us with a woo, woo, woo. And people you know, you can reach out to Dr. Lakeisha. Regular black girl like everybody else. Lakeisha. Regular Dr. Lakeisha Legree, a real <laughs> physician, a great woman. I, I, I love it. All right. So leave us with a woo, woo, woo. Thanks, Michael. And oh, there's my W. Woo, 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 woo. I'll hey, y'all, Dr. Lakeisha. Thank hey, you. Hey, hey. Hump day today, y'all. She'll be back next Wednesday. We're gonna have on regular. Uh, talk to the people for a moment while I let the dog out. Then we got to bring this wonderful vocalist. No, no, oh, Mike, because you're not just gonna use me as some kind of placeholder. I, I'm knowing how it works. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't let me in the whole interview with Dr. Lakeisha. Then you don't talk to them. Now come talk to the people. This, I you're brought not you treat... in, and you said one thing and ran right back out. You're not gonna treat me like I'm Hollywood. <laughs> oh my God, he's still here listening to you. Stop it. Oh, my okay. fault. I didn't know he was here. My bad. My bad. <laughs> my bad. Go ahead and take the dog out, man, thing. before the dog redecorates your carpet, man. I, I just Yes, and then Melanie's coming up to sing, and then we got a very oh, Man, I'm excited video. about Melanie, man. I'm excited came about in. Billy. You heard her talk today. Her voice. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Up. Lakeisha didn't even take the, the camera off. She left us on camera while she's getting her hair done. So oh, we're gonna be able to see the just whole regular, experience. She's ordinary. She don't care. She had the she had the photos. She had the the shops. The beauty salon. Yeah, she was just getting in the chair. They were about to put the apron around. Well, I don't even know if she knows the camera's still on. She probably don't. We should. That, that's amazing. Now we just get to see the salon, oh and that's God. the difference between the salon and the barbershop, Michael. You see what? how in the salon. There's no clothes being sold. There's no radio <laughs> back there. No TVs for sale. The salon is a beautiful place. The barbershop, that, but you can go ahead and take the dog out, Michael. I'll tell the people. Tell the people. Really. And we bring you, I swear we bring you, Melanie. One as second. soon as he take the dog out. What I want everybody to know is when we see a breakdown in men, it's because women have, and Melanie, I'm, I'm glad you're watching. It's because women have infiltrated the barbershop. The barbershop used to be the one place where a man could go and be a man. And you could talk about man stuff. And you could just be men amongst men. Now women are in there getting their eyebrows arched and getting the same haircuts we got. And we don't even have a free place anymore. It used to be a time a woman wouldn't step foot into a barbershop. She dropped the kids off and tell the kid to go in and meet them back outside. But now women are in the barbershops getting the same hair we getting. Y'all getting a little eyebrow. It's ridiculous. Take back the barbershops, men. Take it back. That was where we had our counseling. That was when men's mental health was the best. When we could go in and tell all our business to our barber. We could talk about how bad women treated us and feel safe. Not anymore. It was the first place a child got a job. Michael, I don't know if you ever had a job in a barbershop. But my Never first job. job was in a barbershop, sweeping up hair for the other people in the barbershop and going to buy them beer and cigarettes when I was six. It, Are you it was illegal, but I did it.
no one's responsible for that. That haircut is irresponsibility. That's what that is. No one is responsible if they cut their hair like that. All right, look, That's I'm black. I'm I mean, I'm back. We got to bring this young lady on because she got here before anybody. You know, we came to the show this morning. She is already sitting in the studio. So now she went to hell to all the way to last. So we like to keep the best for last. That's why we started with Hollywood. Stop that. Okay, anyway, what we're going to do is we're bringing on the wonderful Melanie uh, Charles. You see what Dr. Bring Lakeisha has gotten? You see huh? what Dr. Lakeisha is at this point? Dr. Well, Lakeisha don't let that thing loose now. It's it, There it is. Oh, she it was a lot going out. on on that hair scarf. She don't yes, even know we're seeing all this right now. She don't even know we're watching know, her she right now. Lakeisha! Dr. Lakeisha! She can't even hear us. She can't even hear yeah, us. She, she let like, that hair go. I'll put my earbuds in. And the, when a girl mm -hmm. gets through doing her hair, she should go back and do her own. How come we can get a twofer put in there right now? Look at it. She's Man, look at that. She, she got four different hairstyles going on right now, Michael. She got, she got finger waves. She got braids in the back, an afro, a bob. We got to go. Stop it. We got to go. We got to go. All right. Without without further ado, and that was a lot of do, if you know what I mean, um, the wonderful, the lovely, the, the vocal stylings. Of Miss Melanie Charles. Come on, y'all. Melanie hey, Charles. Hey, 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 you. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mel. I have pictures of you too that was sent to me. You have a new album out? I released an album not too long ago called Y'all Don't Really Care About Black Women. That's right. right. Y'all don't really care about black women. And mm -hmm. that, I love this picture harsh. of you. He Thank said that's you. harsh. <laughs> he said that's harsh. <laughs> I love that. Now, Thank on you. the lips on this photo. Now, is that a single, is that a single uh, uh, lipstick or did you put a base on and then hit it with a gloss? I'm dead, you, you're you killing me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a liner first, Michael. There's a liner. Did she do a liner too? She didn't do a liner. Yeah. How y'all know? There is a liner, there is a liner, okay. okay. Yeah, she, she went with a simple lip liner. Right. Then she's going with a matte gloss, right? Not a, and maybe in the glass. Was it matte yeah, though? Was the gloss matte? It's not matte. It's either gloss or matte. They're two different things. Do, yeah, so, you can't do it. They, so you doubling up on the lips, right, right. Don't double up on the on the lips. Not the matte. But not I gotta say, matte. I feel attacked when you was talking about the barbershop because nowadays I be at the barbershop too. Now you're making me feel like I'm not welcome in the barbershop. I feel some kind of way about that because no, y'all don't really care well. about black men. They all don't really care about black. <laughs> they said when you coming back, they waiting for you at, at the shop. How are you this morning, goddess? I am blessed and and just so excited to be talking to you. I love your energy. I love your vibe. So it's an honor to be here with you today. Yay! Isn't this a wonderful morning show, though? It's great. You you cover all the grounds from health to laughter to everything in between. Really great. Woo woo woo! And then we what about my energy, energy, Melanie? And then Cletus up in there. So you know you got what you need. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you saying that he just got what he needs. So everybody have <laughs> Okay, how long you been singing? My whole life. I'm a typical vocalist that started singing in church when I was like five, six years old. You know what I'm saying? Right. My first song in church was To God Be the Glory. And from then, I was just always the music girl from playing piano to playing flute to playing the guitar. I was just an art artsy girl from, from day one. So did you go to class to learn how to play piano? Did somebody teach you? Yes. Um, I, I grew up in Holy Trinity Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York on Ralph on. Avenue. And uh, the church organist also was a coach, a lot of vocalists. So she started me out on piano at five years old. And then the next year I started on, on, on vocals. So yeah, I went to the new school for jazz and contemporary music in New York City. I went to LaGuardia High School, the fame school. You know about the fame school? Well, yes, yes. You actually went to fame. I went to the fame school. I want to live forever. See, you already know. You already know. <laughs> well, then I'm going to get out the way and hear what you're singing today. What are you singing today? I'm going to sing a verse and a, and a chorus of an original song of mine called I Symphony. Love that. I love that. Now, have you been following this a little controversy about reparations where the Proud family did this uh, cartoon to point out that Black people that, uh, were slaves and that slaves built this country? Now, white folks are mad about it, so they're talking about it everywhere. Are you familiar with that cartoon? I'm familiar with the Proud Family, but I did not know about this reparation series. I love that they're talking about that because we need our monies. Yeah, they got this Uncle Tom lady named Candace Owens. Oh, and she, yeah. She's like the little lap dog, the little yeah. black lap dog that the white folks bring out whenever they want to talk anti-black but not do it themselves. Yes. So they parade her out here. <laughs> 
Yeah. And she comes out and she does her stuff. So she did a whole tirade on why are we complaining about we built the country and we didn't build the country and it's a fake and all this stuff. So, so after you do your song and when you after we do your segment, we're going to play that whole uh, cartoon and let the people say what they say. But I'll I just want to get that in for you sing so the people watch it. Don't think it's over when you leave because we usually leave at 8, but we're going to do a little extra this Great. morning. And I'll so be watching. this is an original song, huh? Yes. Okay, well, let me get out the way and let you do it. What is it called? It's called Symphony. Symphony. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Miss Candace Charles Symphony. Melanie Charles singing a song for you. I try to write a song about you and me. But I couldn't find the words or find the melody until I had a dream about you and me. Then the words came. I even wrote a symphony. And oh my love, I breathe the memories into the words you sang in our song. Da -da 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 -da. And with each breath. Comes a memory you will always be in my soul. Whoa. Amazing, Melanie. Amazing. Amazing. Woo, woo, woo. Now, were you listening to music while you did that? I was listening to the music in my heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just. I, I just had music called. in my heart. They told me that was called an irregular heartbeat. <laughs> no, that's called gas. So, listen, <laughs> fantastic song. Wrote it yourself. Wonderful. Boot in the bar. Uh, I wish you would come on the show one day and sing a song with music. Listen, now that I know how you do your thing, I'll be ready next time. Whenever you want me, I'll be here. Oh, okay. And, okay. And you have some pieces you can sing with music? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So I would We love should do that. a compare and comparison, Michael. You should come back and do symphony with the music. Since you just did it a cappella. Okay. And then we can tell the Ooh. difference in the song. Because I Michael loves for the singers to come on with the music. Yeah. I, I'm I'm a purist. Okay. I, I know that a lot of singers hide behind their beat. Right. And mm -hmm. they hide behind the instrumental. I right. love when y'all just come on here naked. Literally right. and figuratively. I love when you <laughs> can just come on. I'm down with the naked part. Yeah. <laughs> when you can come on and we can really get to hear your voice and know what it is and then do the comp comparison yeah. with the music. So we know you can sing. But Melanie, what is this? Jazz is dead. Okay, so my project, Hotel San Claudio, it's a great collaborative album we're dropping. We're performing in Los Angeles on April 6th um, and in the Bay on April 7th. All of your viewers, I need them to come out and come support. It's really great. I'll be singing. I do live sampling. I also play the flute in the band. It's really an exciting project. So everybody mm. should come out. Even you, Michael, you're based in LA too, right? I'm in LA, but mostly oh, LA. You should come out. What is that date? April 6th. April 6th, my birthday. April 6th. Yeah. What? It's so going to be a great show. You should come out for your birthday. Yeah, y'all both should come out. You guys can be my guests. I'll have make sure a publicist sends you all the information, and it's going to be a great vibe. 
I'm trying to slide into my uh my little calendar right now. You see and how she dropped how important she was, Michael? Or not her publicist. Oh. <laughs> I just called her publicist who told me that he told her not to do a cappella. That she came and did a cappella anyway. Uh-uh, that's not what she told you. That, that uh-uh, that, that what she tell you? All right. She didn't tell you that we didn't don't do a cappella on him. She said, do what you prepared to do. And what I prepared was acapella. That was her sneak out. That's how she slid out She's of it. Smart. She's she smart. She knows. You know, we've been the last two weeks, we've been on people about that. They walk in and do acapella. We say, we don't do acapella here. And then they come back and sing a song with music. But every representative, I tell them off top, we don't do acapella here. But you here, we ain't going to send you away after you came and waited the whole show. Hell no. But. I need to hear you with some music. Girl. Okay. I, if I knew that, I, that wouldn't have been a problem for me. Ooh, but check this. You know now. I do you, know now. When Hello. you coming. When you coming. Listen, <laughs> whenever you're going to have me, I'm ready. I want you time. back this Friday. Can you come Friday? This Friday. You um, said whenever. I got my pen and my paper right here. You okay. did say you whenever. Know, you did say whatever. Okay. You know why this Friday I'm not going to, I'm going to say no? Because this Friday is my birthday. And this is an early show. I want to sleep in on my birthday. Wait, how's this your birthday? You just said your project is April something. My April. birthday is this Friday, though. Oh, it's his birthday this April 6th. My, My birth birthday. Yeah, his April birthday 6th. is April 6th. And your birthday is this Friday? Is this Friday. I want to sleep in, Michael. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. So, woo, woo, okay. woo. What, were we in March? March, were you Pisces? I'm a Pisces, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. The little bit of fishy. You I know. Orion. You almost made it. You just, I, ugh, listen, just waited I a know. little too long. That was I know. Long. Pisces, we're a mess. We're a mess. <laughs> okay, so what's going to be your excuse for next Friday? I don't have an excuse for next Friday. I'm down to do next Friday. Let's go. Okay, y'all saw it. Y'all heard it right here. She's coming back next Friday with music. Melanie okay. Charles right here. Friday. I'm writing this big, too. Friday. I love her New York girl attitude, man. I love it. Have a New York girl attitude. Are you from New York, though? Brooklyn. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, okay. all day, yeah. baby. I told you. I told you it was Brooklyn. I could tell. Yeah. She probably got on well, Tim's I, right now. <laughs> I want to thank you not just for your song, but for your wonderful energy. Your energy is just wonderful, and uh, you're so patient. Thank you for sticking to the very end so we can win, you know? And we got one more thing we're doing, but tell people Two things. Tell them once again about the April 6th project and then tell them how they can find you. All right, y'all. We hope to see you on April 6th for the Jazz is Dead series, Hotel San Claudio. And you can find me on the Instagram under Melanie Charles is the flower on Twitter, Melanie Charles. But honestly, if you Google Melanie Charles, you'll find out everything about me. So. Come on. All right. They said happy birthday to you already, Melly. Thank happy you, birthday, Melly Pisces sister. She says she March 15th. Mr. Yay. Thomas wants to say happy birthday to you too. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Thomas. Earth Day Queen. Oh, it's beautiful. Me too. It's a oh, so Sabrina Phil says she's a Brooklyn baby, just like you. Yes, woo right. woo woo. Look hey, at that. Sabrina. All right. Well, God bless you real good. Can you leave us with a woo woo woo? Whoa, whoa, whoa. There she is, Melanie Charles, y'all. I compelled us this week, but be back next next Friday with music and everything. I'm excited. I can't wait to see her. I'm going to throw our picture up one more time. Her name is Melanie Charles, and I love that picture. I love that picture. That I love the, that she used the red, black, and green. She used the colors, red, gold, black, green. Oh, that's us right there. That's black all day long. And Yo, that's, black, that's sultry. That's her so picture true. matches her voice. Mm. Like when you see it, like some people you see their picture, you be like, oh, but she don't sing like that. Like her mm -hmm. picture matches how she sung. I liked it. Well I done. I agree. I agree with that. You are definitely right, my friend. Now listen, uh, without further ado, we've been playing doo-doo this morning, but without further, no, we haven't. We had no doo-doo. This show was fantastic this morning. Uh, but for yourself, Michael, I went twice while we've been doing the show. Oh my God. Oh, did you ever see um, Steve Martin? Uh, he was in a movie called Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. I've seen Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. And he and and they they tricking people. They going around the con me. And the scene where he plays like he's in a wheelchair and he's an invalid. So they sitting at a full dinner table, and he says, "Excuse me, do you mind if I go to the bathroom?" And they said, "No, not at all." He goes. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is so stupid. I love that show. Okay, listen. Uh, when I saw this overtime before, on the show, a little overtime. When we did the thing, um, when I ran this piece of tape before we only had a part of it, and I just sort of ran through it. And then last night I was looking at this closely, and I see this Uncle Tom woman, Candace. Uh, Not whenever Uncle she comes Tom. Out, she is. She's Auntie Tom. Auntie Tom. Auntie Tom Candace. Um, and um, she's a Republican like you. And she... Wait, wait the lies, Michael. <laughs> once again, she came out and took this beautiful piece that really was an artistic way of, of pointing out that we have reparations coming, too. She took it and just doo-dooed all on it and said that black people whined and again asked for something they ain't got coming, dog died and shit on the floor. I'm sure her husband is white if she has a husband, you know, but... But uh, she lost. This is the loss and a breath stain. So I want to show this in its entirety. It's from the wonderful cartoon called The Proud Family. I'm going to have to go ahead, hit this button, and then y'all stay with us. Watch it through. I want to hear some opinions. I want to see some opinions come up on that chat. Go ahead. Hit, 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 hit. This country was built on slavery, which means slaves, slaves built this country. country. Tilled this land from sea to sea to sea. First it was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Whitney did his thing and cotton became king. And we were its soldiers. Four, Four million, million strong. Fighting for America's freedoms, even though we remained America's slaves. slaves. Built this country. The descendants of slaves continue to build this. Slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering and continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the systemic prejudice racism and white, white supremacy, supremacy that america was founded with and still has not atoned for slaves, slaves built, built this country. country not only field hands but carpenters masons blacksmiths musicians inventors built cities from jamestown to new orleans to banica washington 40 acres and a mule we'll take the 40 acres keep the mule we, we made, made your families rich. rich from the southern plantation heirs to the northern bankers to the New England ship owner, the founding fathers, former president, current senators, the Illuminati, the New World Order, slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. We had Tubman, Turner, Frederick D. Then they say Lincoln freed the slaves. But slaves were men. And women. And only we can free ourselves. Emancipation, Emancipation is not freedom. Jim Crow, segregation, redlining, public schools, feeding private prisons, where we become slaves again. As we celebrate Juneteenth for, for the umpteenth time, our account is still outstanding. Because this country was built on slavery, which means Slaves built this country. And we demand our 40 acres and a mule. About that. You can keep the mule. Keep the 40. We're taking our freedom. I love that. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I like to stop at saying, and I hate to use the word on a family show, but Candace can kiss my ass. And I've already told her that more than once and wrote a poem about her Uncle Tomism and posted it nationally. And I know that you you think that you know the etymology of all of this, but you're incorrect about it because it's about current usage. It's not about original origin. So you still talking about her Uncle Tom was the nice guy because the Uncle Tom in the when the uh, Uncle Tom's cabin was a nice guy who looked out for the other slaves and he wouldn't beat another slave. He'd be beat himself before he beat another slave. But over the years, the connotation is Uncle Tom is a white, is a black person who's kissing white folks' ass. That is what the connotation is, even if it's not the correct definition. Go ahead. No, I, I so, I, and I, I, I get what you're saying, Michael, and and I and I and I've understood that, and I always be like, if somebody calls an orange blue, and just because we've always called oranges blue, doesn't take away from the fact that the orange is an orange. And so, what's really what the only thing that I have against that is that when we take that connotation and we keep saying Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom, people won't go back and read the book. People won't go back and see what that what who Uncle Tom really was, and so. We keep people in a in a state of perpetual ignorance by not saying I don't that think so. I they, think it's the opposite. I think it's the opposite. I think because of conversations like yours, they'll go back and read for themselves to see who Tom who, is. So they, they, I, I if they hear you, people, yeah. If they hear you defending it, if they hear you say, No, that's not Uncle Tom is Uncle Tom was the good fella, and you're not doing it right, then I'm saying Uncle Tom means that you are a black person who's shuffling and jiving for the white man. Then hopefully the people who are listening to go, 
let me go see if Cletus know what he's talking about. Maybe Michael Crazy. And that's fine with me. But I know anywhere on this planet, at least in America, if you call somebody Uncle Tom, we ain't going to go, oh, what does he call him, a nice person? Because in the book he was a nice person? Fuck, heck no. We're going to go, we know what an Uncle Tom is because that's how we've been using the word for 100 years. So the connotation of a thing is the thing that's effective, not its original uh, meaning. So it's a whole lot of words out there that have original meaning that we don't use. But communication is when two people understand the thing you're saying. So if we both want to call her a peanut butter butt, she's a peanut butter butt, you can say, oh, no, she's not peanut butter butt. Peanut butter butt means it has to have peanuts in there. It can be crunchy or smooth, but she has a regular butt. But if everybody else in the world thinks a peanut butter butt is an ignorant, racist, backwards sister who kissing white folks ass every chance they get, then that is going to be what we understand. So I'm just saying connotation is everything. Nigga is a perfect example. Nigga meant all kind of wonderful stuff. Nigga didn't, didn't mean uh, a, a black person or an ignorant person or a person. N nigga became, came from the word king, emperor, ruler. So if we go back to original definition, we can't say nigga no more because nigga mean, oh, you king. Look at that king. Look at that king. So, so it's connotation. All right, go ahead. I'm ready. Come back. No, so I, 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 I 100. percent So I'm one of the people who can see exactly what you're saying and understand what you're saying. I can agree with what you're saying about mm -hmm. the connotation of it. Mm -hmm. The problem for me is that the masses. So you, you are what you are going to be in the talent of the tenth. No matter what anybody says about you, Michael, you're going to be in the talent of the tenth. You're going to be in that ten percent of people who look beyond the veil, who can see things on a different level, who can understand that. You got a lot of people who can't spell connotation, don't even know what the word connotation means. People mm. be like, man, I, I had connotation. They make evaporated milk. I mean, no, that's carnation. That's a whole different yeah. different thing, right? Yeah. So a lot of people get the connotation. What I what I want us to do as a whole is to move beyond well it's always been thought of as this so i don't have a problem with i know what the connotation is and i know what it means and i know what you're saying when you say i just hate me personally when people when people put uncle tom with it because that's not even what the story is and so if i go into the barbershop nine out of ten cats in the barbershop don't even realize that uncle tom what his role was and what he actually did they just know oh uncle tom is horrible Uncle Tom is terrible. No, 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 no. Now, as far as as far as Candace is, but as far as Candace is concerned, everything that you say fits. Everything that you say fits. I don't know if she's necessarily a lap dog of white people, but she's always in the wrong. Well, not she, always. Modern day connotation of the word uh, Uncle Tom. That is true no matter how you try to move around what the language means or what the word means. She is the modern day connotation of an uncle tom so if you go into a room with a thousand people and ask mm -hmm. what's an uncle tom it, although uh it will it, it will be erroneous and when you're talking about the correct definition of who that original uncle tom was 90 percent of people gonna say uncle tom is that nigga who's kissing a white man's ass because that's what we understand the connotation to be so hey brother i'm still on live show hold on a second so go ahead. So 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 let's. No, uh, I, I get what you're saying. So now Candace Owens is gonna be wrong in her in her. She gonna be wrong in anything that. dealing with black yeah. people. Okay. Yeah, in her depiction of that, absolutely. We'll call you at this number in 15 minutes. Pick the phone up, okay? Yes, Bermuda, Bermuda. Oh Hello? no, not Bermuda. Yeah, you you got to talk to. Okay, so so can okay. I'm sorry. I, I, please do this one more time. Call me back in 15 minutes. I'll be off the air and everything. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so all right. So go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. So I, mean? I definitely get I definitely get what you're saying. And I definitely agree. It's just like if you walk into a room full of black people and you'll ask, you can ask them, has anybody in here had diabetes? And none of them are raising their hand. They'd be like, anybody in here got sugar? Yeah, I got sugar. Yeah, me and my grandmama had sugar. We all had sugar. We all know. That sugar ain't the term for, you know, the, the, the clinical term is diabetes and what is understood as sugar. So I definitely get that. But I've always been about enlightening and educating people on, on what, what, the, what the real is. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I, that's that's my issue. My, now, my issue with what you're saying about Candace Owens, I mean, I'm all in on that. Candace Owens. I, mean, it, I don't have an issue on any of it, but words are my shit. Words is what I do. I love words. So you're a kind of linguist. We can go back to sugar. Even sugar. I got the sugar. 
that's not the definition of sugar. Right. Diabetes Correct. is not the definition of sugar. Sugar is a substance that we eat that's come from grain, that's grown in the ground. But everybody know when you say you got the sugar that you mean diabetes. And at the end of the day, pure communication is when the, the listener understands what the sender is sending. So if they understand when I say Uncle Tom, that I mean some black woman is kissing some man, white man's ass just because she wants to be like them, they're going to understand what I mean when I say Uncle Tom. No I, and I, agree, I agree with you. And the only people besides you in Kansas, the only people who have had something to say anti that have been the people who was mad because I called this boy, her Uncle Tom. And I call her Uncle Tom and they, oh, you don't even know what Uncle Tom means. No, I absolutely know what it means. I've read the book. I know Beecher Stowe's work. I know the book. But that's not our current reality. Our current reality of what that word Uncle Tom is, is a step and fetch it. I'm going to kiss the white man's ass. I'm going to bow and shuffle and do whatever I can to make Whitey happy with me. That's what she does on a daily basis. And if you go to Uncle Tom in the encyclopedia, you won't even see Uncle Tom. You'll see Candace Owens waving. <laughs> so I'm just saying, that's my point. And that's your point. And I get your point. And for the longest, I thought the only point you had was the one on the top of your head. And it turns out that you actually are deep as well as wide. Come on, somebody. I that's love it. it. Yeah, so <laughs> I, you, know, I, you know, I always say I, I agree with it. And, I, and so mm -hmm. one of my things that I, and I love, and when we have discussions like this, and I think that people need to be able to understand and be able to walk away from is that the two things can be true at one time. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So more than one thing can be true. So that 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 is both what what, what both of us are saying is true. So that that's that's the thing with with that. And in your book, yes, yeah, Sambo. Sambo is the villain in, in the book Uncle Tom's Cabin. Sambo. Correct. But the Uncle Tom in real life is Candace Owens. Uh Mr. Thomas said, I got a couple of things I can call Candace. Uh, all right. Hey, all right, everybody. So I think we wore that conversation into the ground. Did anybody have anything to say on it? I don't see anybody with a response on that. So we ain't going to mess with it. We're going to keep it moving. So here we are, uh, hour and 20 and an hour show. Still got 68 viewers, 54 likes. Whoa, that was some good likes. And we Did you get Rosemary her birthday shout out? No, Rosemary's birthday is today. I didn't see that in the in the in the chat, y'all. I'm sorry, cause stuff is going fast. Happy birthday, Rosemary! You're so lovely and you're cherry, and we love your lovely face. Love to have you around the place. It's your birthday, and we love you, Rosemary. Rosemary, woo! It's your birthday, girl. You better do your birthday dance. Put around. Woo! Okay. Did we say it? Yeah, I, I think we got it. I okay, think. I think we got that in. Hey, Valerie, Angel loves gospel. Hi, baby. Hey, Stacy, Quentin, love you. Uh, 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 ben Frank, you better be Frank and quit fooling around. Hey, Mr. Thomas, you always here. We love having you here. We're doing a late roll call. Angel, the incense lady, Angel Helms is here as well. Rock Thompson, I don't know. Is that a new person? Y'all, I don't know. Rock Thompson? I hope he's a regular. Yeah, I haven't met Rock Thompson before. This guy. You want him to be irregular or? Irregular is good. Uh, let me see. Uh, Beecher Stowe was a racist. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. I see what you're saying. Sambo was one of the ratting out the slaves and slave man. Cause that's what I would be. I'd be, I'm, I'm weak. I would be Sambo. If I was a slave, I'm telling on everybody, my mama, everybody. Y'all, I'm sorry. Y'all got to go. I'm sitting in the back house, in the big house. I'm sitting on the porch with the uh, floors with uh, linoleum. Uh, and I'm I'm sipping lemonade. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a, it's hard. It's hard to um. It's hard to picture what you would be. It's crazy how you would be at a slave because your mindset is different. Because we've grown up in this time, so right. if you would be like, if I was a slave, I would have been. Nah, you would have been different because your mindset would have been different. Yeah, that I applaud mean. all the slaves just for those who survived it, those who didn't survive it. I I I'm you one mean, who you just say you applaud. Yeah, all I do. Slaves? All right, go I ahead. do. I do. Um, I do. Those who, who decided to jump off the boat and felt like they couldn't live in captivity, I, I tip my hat to them because they made the decision that was best for them. Those who just said, listen, I'm going to go and I'm going to endure to the end and survive it, I tip my hat to them because it's just something that I don't I don't feel like, even in my current mindset, it would be something that I could do. So sometimes we look at them, we have some black people who look at and belittle slaves and look at them like they weren't strong or that they were weak. 
I think there's a different level of strength that they had to get up day after day to know that you were going to be living in a virtual hell day after day your and you still survived life. it. Yeah. For your entire life. It's, it's crazy. And and, and um, I'm sorry, I had to run that piece today because that child gets away with saying stuff like that all the time. They had a guy on TV just talking about this white dude on um, uh, Fox. And he'll just say any ridiculous shit he want, but all these Fox people follow whatever the white racists are saying. So whatever they come up and say, this is what, then all the followers go along with it. So he did a big piece. Uh, his name is Carlson. Carlson, something Carlson. Oh, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson, all right. So he did a whole piece about the uh, January 6th. Hey, y'all, this is the after show, everybody. If y'all have to go, we understand the show ended at 8. Not just us talking. We ain't got no ain't no filters. Ain't no we cussing shit. That all, the day show is over. Now with this the after show. Okay, so Tucker Carlson, who is super, super racist, why he got the job in the first place, is he came out and did his whole tape about... Um, how on January 6th, that thing wasn't nothing like we say it. And we blowing it all out of proportion. Everybody wasn't rioting and doing stuff. A lot of people were just citizens who were just peacefully protesting. So they showed some of them, you know, at the water fountain. After they broke in to the Capitol, they at the water fountain calmly, okay? They showed them walking through the White House. They say some of it, they were just on a tour, right? And it's like, it's like saying, what are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just stupid. And the followers, the sheep, are just their nose so wide open. They, they're they not going to follow their blind, they lying eyes. They're going to follow whoever's waving the red flag and say, hey, everybody, look at me. And that's what Carlson does. And he gets away with it. He says things are so outlandish. And the problem with that, the danger in that is the innocent white folk. Now I'm talking about white folks who ain't start they they out being racist. They, didn't, they ain't trying to be racist. They just want to be regular folk. But they go for indoctrination at one place or the other. So either you go and get your information with things are positive and loving and healing care, or you go get your information from people who are beating the drum of racism and trying to say we white folks and we better than everybody else. And everybody else is lying. Just follow us because we're the only ones who know the truth. You mm -hmm. can follow any of the things you want to follow. But this guy, he's just a white version of Candace Owens. It's the same thing. It's just people spruing for a hate for their personal agenda so they can run things the way they want to run them, which takes me back to the cartoon. We got some reparations coming called black people, call them slaves or whatever you want to call them, built this country. And we have reparations coming because so many other folks who are Japanese got reparation. The Jewish people got a reparation. Everybody getting a check, but uh, we got a check coming and we want our money. And tell Candace to call me. She know my number. She know how to reach me. Coward. You're a coward, Candace. And so is your white boyfriend. Uh, okay. Husband. He, he did he marry yet? I think he did. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's married. married. You sort of used that one. Um, I made that up. Y'all can't be funny. Excuse me. It don't always work, but you know you got to take a shot. How do you know? If you don't go in. You miss all the shots you don't take. That you miss every shot you don't take 100% of those. Okay. That'll wrap George up. Farmer that, is her husband. Get that travel against get out of here music. Oh, Play I'll just tell chess, you. George Farmer. Play chess. It's going to teach you to think three moves ahead, and that's going to help a lot in just natural life, you know. Um, you hitting that music when we do it. No, I got you. Oh, you got me. Okay, cool. And let me, while you're doing that, let me look real quick to make sure that I didn't forget any of my what's the names, any of my um, the pictures I want to show today in my show and tell. So, you know, um, you keep saying that um, John Witherspoon looked like, I think you said AJ Johnson. On this what? picture, right there. Right but there. But you know what, like, though? He does look like AJ Johnson in that picture, but don't he look like he could have been a Jackson? Absolutely. Absolutely. He could have been a, the been Jackson Tito? Six. Would have been Tito? Well, Tito's the best Jackson um, out of all of them. But he um, looked, Tito looked like he got a different daddy, though. Tito don't look like he got the same dad. Look, no. Tito's face is like that. It's structured square. But Michael and Janet, their faces are narrow. Well, they're the same person. Oh, Janet and Michael. I know he didn't go nowhere. I know they didn't go nowhere. They, they be trying to fool y'all with that stuff. Look at a young John. Oh, my God. This is cool. One day they'll be doing this about you. They'll be showing the pictures of the young you. Was there ever a young you? Uh, no, I'm like Morgan Freeman. I came out old. 
Oh my God, that dude did. That's an actor. This white boy did that painting. He is so good. And he's just a wild dude. There's the painting, y'all. Uh, what is this? Just getting some things. Oh, that's one more photo of the shoes. Woody, woody, woo, woo, woo. This was my thing for today. Hey, call me crazy, but I love to see people happy and succeed. Life's a journey, not a competition. Whoa, there, John, John, there you go. It's time for us to end the show. I got my puppy and my, my woman too, and we got to go. And we done our thing for you in this the Michael Kaya morning show. And there's Janisha. She's somewhere on the go. And that's me and my honey. It ain't funny. She wearing that coat like she's in the money. Oh, it's the Michael Kaya morning show with Cletus and Sonia and your boy. We got to go. And we had fun. We said goodbye. Before this rapper make y'all all start to cry and just say, we ain't fooling with that Negro no more. Let's go and get out of this doggone show. Cletus the only one that's got a brain, but he dresses like damn near insane. So let's just, let's keep watching the show anyway. Because they have a lot of fun and they sure do play. And don't cost us nothing. And the thing is free. And that's all I got to say for you. What about me? All right, I'm going. That's it. I'm out of the ride. Plus, we also out of time is Cletus and Michael, your boys, you know, at the Mike Fukai, your morning show. I hit the button just now. They should be gone in a minute. And we here.